From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. Hurt but not hindered, how to move forward. You don't want to miss it. Join us for the Bridge Bible Study every Thursday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's streamed across all of our platforms. Invite your friends and family. Download the student outline from our website at myspbc.org or text the word INSIDER to 804-643-4769 to receive it automatically each week. Invite someone to watch with you. You may not realize it, but the health of your soul is affected by what you experience in life, the ups and downs, challenges, and stress. Caring for your soul goes a long way in keeping you steady, filled with peace, and growing in wisdom. After a year in pandemic, we are all in need of repair. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, for this insightful series as he leads us on a journey of soul repair. Invite somebody to share it with you. You can now schedule your own COVID-19 vaccine appointments by number one, visiting vaccinefinder.org to find locations in your area and to schedule your own appointment. Individuals without internet or phone access can get assistance inside local libraries utilizing their free internet access. Number two, visit vax.rchd.com to directly schedule an appointment at one of the local vaccination events hosted by the Richmond Henrico Health District. Number three, schedule an appointment over the phone by calling RHHD at 804-205-3501, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Questions? Email outreach at myspbc.org. Rain or shine, our fresh food distribution will take place May 14th and 28th. Over a thousand fresh food boxes will be given away. No registration, just show up and pick up at 29 Elm Street, Petersburg, Virginia from 2 to 4 p.m. At 700 East Belt Boulevard in Richmond from 4 to 6 p.m. Or at 4247 Creighton Road, Henrico, Virginia from 4 to 6 p.m. Or until all food is gone. This is in partnership with Feed More, Produce Source Partners, Save a Lot, and Anthem Healthkeepers Plus. Mask is required. Questions? Email outreach at myspbc.org to volunteer. We give praise to God for 40 new members thus far in 2021. Who will invite number 41? Every new member is required to complete our DNA seminar. It's a one day, 90 minute introduction to our church family. The next seminar for adults is Monday, May 3rd at 6.30 p.m. The next seminar for kids is Sunday, May 16th at 12.30 p.m. Visit myspbc.info slash DNA for Zoom login info. Connect with us for one-on-one -on -one prayer or counseling at any time during our Sunday morning worship experience. We'd love to talk with you. Join us in our virtual gathering room at www.myspbc.info slash gathering room. Love God, love people, got skills? We're hiring. We would love to hear from you. Learn more about our current openings and how to apply at www.myspbc.info slash job openings. Join us for Real Talk. Black Women in Wellness, hosted by the American Heart Association and brought to you by Privia Women's Health and Virginia Women's Center. It will include an expert panel that will provide tips to boost your body and soul. Please join us on May 11th from 12 to 1 p.m. via Zoom at the link on the screen or from 7 to 8 p.m. on Facebook at American Heart VA. Come lend your voice to a conversation about the state of health for black women and what we can all do to improve it. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop.
as it is written in Psalm 117. Praise God, everybody. Applaud God, all people. His love has overtaken our lives. God's faithful ways are eternal. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious and magnificent God, we call on your holy and righteous name. You alone are worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. God inhabits our praise both individually and collectively as we connect during this virtual worship experience on this communion Sunday, on this first Sunday in May. Allow your presence, power, and peace to prevail in our lives as we worship you today. Allow our souls to rejoice, our burdens to be lifted, our faith to be fortified as we experience the fullness of your grace and goodness through the transformative power of your word. In the mighty, miraculous name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, hallelujah and amen. Hello, St. Paul's everywhere. I'm Reverend Jamie Duncan, Life Stage Pastor for the Encore Life Stage for all who are 50-something. Welcome to worship. We are excited that we are worshiping together today. If you're connecting for the first time, let us know by simply texting the word NEW to 804-643-4769 so that we may extend a friendly hello to you. Regardless of where you are, let's connect and worship together. If you're on social media, Greet the person before you and behind you in the chat space. If you like something, hit the like button. If you think of someone you want to bless, hit the share button. If the message or the music speaks to you, feel free to comment in the chat space. And don't forget to use your life stage color emoji. Encore, you know what to do. Yes, we want you to worship with one another. We want to worship with you, not for you. So let's connect, let's get involved, and let's have an amazing worship experience today together. God bless you.
Right in the crossfire of hope and regret Thought I could be my own savior But I'm sinking, sinking fast Cause it's too much to handle Alone in the battle I'm desperate for you is great, great and mighty is the Lord. And what a joy it is to share with you today the word of God. So if you have your scriptures, go with me now to Psalm 142 in the Old Testament. And I want to read from the message translation, which may read differently than yours, but at the end of the day, the truth is just the truth. We're in a series entitled Soul Repair. And let's direct our attention now to the word of God. I cry loudly to God, loudly I plea with God for mercy. I spill out all my complaints before him and spell out all my troubles in detail. As I sink in despair, my spirit ebbing away, you know how I'm feeling. You know the danger I'm in. You know the traps hidden in my path. Look right, look left, 
there's not a soul who cares what happens. I'm up against the wall with no exit. It's just me all alone. I cry out, God. I call out, you're my last chance, my only hope for life. Oh, listen, please listen. I've never been this low. Rescue me from those who are hunting me down. I'm no match for them. Get me out of this dungeon so I can thank you in public. Your people will form the circle around me and you'll bring me showers of blessings. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. And from that text today, with the aid, anointing, and assistance of the Holy Spirit, we want to teach and preach from the topic, leaving loneliness alone. Loneliness is a personal and subjective experience. That's partly what makes it so hard to identify. Dr. Jeremy Noble, a lecturer at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health said, and I quote, if you're on Mars and had a telescope so powerful you could look through walls, you'd be able to find the isolated people on our planet, but you would not be able to find the lonely people, end quote. The opposite also is true, says Robert Walsdinger, a psychiatrist at Massachusetts General Hospital. He said, you've probably known people who seem to have a lot of friends, but when they talk about it, they'll say, I don't really feel like anybody knows me at all. Loneliness is a personal and subjective experience. Social psychologists define loneliness as the gap between the social connections you would like to have and those that you feel you do have. According to a recent report by the Kaiser Family Foundation, 22% of adults in the U.S. say that they often or always feel lonely. Cigna's survey reported that number as high as 61%. Robert D. Putnam, in his book, Bowling alone pointed out that loneliness is at such epidemic levels, it is now a threat to public health. Loneliness has significant health implications, according to the research of Julian Holt Lundstedt from Brigham Young University. The heightened risk of mortality from loneliness exceeds that of obesity and equals that of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. COVID-19, of course, has pushed loneliness further into the public conversation as people across the country and indeed across the globe have stayed home fearful of contracting a deadly virus or aiding in its spread. Terms like social distancing, sequester, quarantine, self-isolation, and shelter in place accentuate the profound social implications of this pervasive pandemic. Novelist Olivia Lang summarized it well recently in a New York Times column saying, we're all dealing with loneliness now. The somebodies, anybodies, everybodies, and the nobodies. We are a generation of casual contacts where we find ourselves more often identified as numbers rather than names. We have credit card numbers, social security numbers, account numbers, phone numbers, street address numbers, badge numbers, and driver's license numbers. We're Facebook friends and followers with everybody, but don't really know anybody. And loneliness was rising even before the pandemic. Vivek Murther in Together, The Healing Power of Human Connection in a Sometimes Lonely World pointed out that modern progress has brought unprecedented advances that make it easier for us technically to connect, but often these advances create unforeseen challenges that make us feel more alone and disconnected than ever. Loneliness is personal and subjective, but it is not monolithic. When most people think of loneliness, they're thinking of interpersonal loneliness, like, do I have a friend? Do I have someone I can tell my troubles to? 
but there's also societal loneliness where we wonder if I enter a room, is my arrival both anticipated and welcome? And there's existential loneliness where one wonders, do I fit into the universe? Does my life have any meaning, weight, value, purpose, valiance, or mission? Warren Worsby, a frequent commenter on scriptural text said, like many other feelings in our lives, it is easier to experience loneliness than it is to define it. It's being all by yourself, even when you're surrounded by rooms full of people. It's feeling isolated, even in the midst of a crowd. It saps you of strength and robs you of hope. These are sad words, but they are echoed in Psalm 142 because this is the song of a lonely person crying for help. Psalm 142 illustrates the cycle of loneliness that every person goes through at one time or another in their lives. This psalm is one of 14 maskil psalms. Maskil is a Hebrew annotation that describes how this song should be used in the context of a worship experience. However, the important thing is not the super subscription of the psalm, but that it sets the psalm in its historical perspective. Because no matter what text you're reading, if it's accurate, right next to the word maskil is the phrase, a prayer when David was in the cave. Rewind the story of David and we discovered that there were two cave experiences noted in his life. First, there was the cave of En Gedi. In 1 Samuel 24, it was in that cave that David cut off a piece of Saul's skirt without Saul knowing about it. Second, there was the cave of Adullam in 1 Samuel 22, where David is on the run from Saul. Saul's personality at this point was a toxic brew of insecurity, jealousy, and anger towards David, whom he saw as his arch rival and nemesis. Determined to assassinate him, he chased David all over the countryside. Finally, 1 Samuel 22 reports, So David escaped to the cave of Adullam, and when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it, they went down to him there. Everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, and he became captain over them. Now there were about 400 men with him. David is running from Saul. He now finds a place of refuge. And look at the description again of the people who come to be his cohorts, companions, and comforters. Everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented. In the midst of this experience, in the cave of Adullam, David wrote the words that are given to us in the 142nd Psalm. It seems rather strange to hear him say in verse 4 of this song, there's not a soul that cares about what happens to me. I'm up against the wall with no exit. It's just me all alone when we know that there were at least 400 men accompanying him. But I do need to pause and point out here that you can be in a room full of people and still be lonely. Somebody should type amen right there. He was surrounded by people, but they were not the kind or caliber in whom he could confide, find comfort, or build collegiality. Watch this, because everybody around him was needy. Let the whole church say needy. This is too good to drive past. Let me put it in neutral for a moment and idle the motor because I need to tell somebody, anybody, and everybody uh, that everybody needs something at some time. But if you surround yourself with people who only take from you and never give to you, it won't be long before you're depleted and ultimately defeated. 
You need somebody in your life who is pouring into you and adding to you. Is there an amen online? Here he is a refuge from the misguided malice of the most powerful man in the land. And he's holed up in a cave with 400 misfits in the cave of Adullam. Misery becomes his muse, and David writes this song to describe and depict how he felt. And I'm grateful that he's truthful and transparent. Walk with me for a moment, because first, he's disoriented. Everybody say disoriented. He says in the song, I sink in despair, my spirit ebbing away like a raging flood rushing against its boundaries. He can barely stand against the strength of his own emotions. Literally, the phrase he uses here means that his spirit was muffled and subdued and smothered. This is a picturesque phrase of his spirit trying to reach out and give expression to what he felt, but even that is muffled. He has lost his way. He's overwhelmed. He can't figure it out or work it out. His powers of judgment and discernment are gone. He is disoriented. But secondly, he is deserted. Everybody type deserted. It's right there in verse 4. He says, look right, look left. There's not a soul who cares what happens. Forsaken, rejected, isolated, hunted by Saul, abandoned by his associates, and surrounded by saboteurs. He's disoriented and deserted. But that's not all. Look at verse 6. Thirdly, he is depressed. He says, I've never been this low. Literally, it means to go into a valley experience emotionally, to be brought down to the lowest ebbs, the lowest rungs of human experience. His thoughts of disorientation and desertion turn inward and begin to deplete and impact his spirit. His joy is gone. His outlook is pessimistic. His future is uncertain. He is bottomed out. It is no wonder that fourthly, he's feeling defeated. Listen to the words again of verse six. Rescue me from those who are hunting me down. I am no match for them. See, it's one thing to be depressed and have hope that things will eventually get better. But David is at his lowest point. The walls are closing in on him. There's no way of escape obvious to him. He sees no sunshine on the horizon, adversaries assembled to attack him, and nothing working for him. And so fifthly, he feels doomed. He says, I am in a dungeon. I am in a prison, and there is no no way out. What causes a person to feel like that? Those could be the emotions of a person serving in leadership who discovers that the higher you rise, the lonelier it is, that the greater your visibility, the greater your vulnerability. Those could be the emotions of a single man or woman struggling to navigate life in a COVID environment. Can you imagine trying to date in a pandemic. I heard about a man, I don't know if the story is true, who wanted to join a Lonely Hearts Club. He sent in his picture and they sent it back and said, we aren't that lonely. What do you do when there's no match on match.com, when eHarmony can't sing, when plenty of fish don't catch nothing, when Tinder can't light a match? Somebody streaming knows what I'm talking about. These could be the emotions of felt by somebody growing older in a world that prizes, values, and cherishes youthfulness. Uh, you're growing older where it takes you twice as long to look half as good, where the gleam in your eye you discover is just the sun bouncing off your bifocals, where you turn out the lights for economic rather than romantic reasons, where your knees buckle but your belt won't. These could be the emotions of breaking up with somebody you love by decision, desertion, divorce, or death. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Thank you, boys to men. But somebody listening to me right now, 
knows these feelings of sadness and loneliness. And if I'm pinging your profile, if I'm barking up your tree, if I'm sliding into your DM or making a deposit into your mailbox, I've got some good news for you. Because David here does not just describe for us how he felt, but he gives us some cosmic clues regarding how to deal with it. Wake up and write this down as Frederick Sampson would say, because I'm about to share a formula found here and the steps to be taken here that can empower both you and me and us together to leave loneliness behind. Anybody online interested? Just type, bring it on, Rev. Well, let's go, because you can leave loneliness behind if you will first verbalize it. Everybody type verbalize. Verbalize, V-E-R-B-A-L-I-Z-E, verbalize it. That's step number one. It means say it out loud, say it out loud. Notice how skillfully scripture states that David cried. He verbalized his emotion to the Lord. I'm in verse one where he says, I cry loudly. That's the adjective to God. Loudly, I plead with God for mercy. Verse 2, I spill out all my complaints before him and spell out all my troubles in detail. Verse 3, as I sank into despair, my spirit ebbing away. He's talking to God. You know how I'm feeling. You know the danger I'm in. You know the traps set hidden in my path. Verse 5, I cry out. There it is, verbalization. God, I cry call out. You're my last chance, my only hope for life. Verse 7, get me out of this dungeon so I can thank you in public. Repeatedly, my friends, over and over, David says, I cried to God. He verbalized his problem. My grandmother used to tell us, and this is some Mississippi wisdom, that a closed mouth don't get fed. He cried out. He opened his mouth. Now, that may seem trite to you, but the first step towards finding healing for your heart and repairing your soul and leaving loneliness behind is to push yourself, if need be, to express clearly and candidly what you feel to the Lord. How honest are you with God? I want to encourage you today to keep it 100 with God. Go to God and say, Lord, this is how I feel. I'm crying to you. I'm opening my heart to you. I'm revealing my soul to you. This is where I am because can I suggest God is not interested in pious platitudes. God is not interested in spiritual soliloquies. God is not interested in superficial sayings. God desires our deep gut level, stirring, raw, authentic, genuine truth. How is it, friends, that the cosmic creator, our reliable redeemer, the savior of sinners, the shepherd of our souls, the best friend we've ever had, has not yet heard the deepest lowest, darkest, most desperate cry of our hearts when we are in despair and when we are in trouble. David told me to encourage you with these words today. Tell God how you feel. Somebody ought to type, tell him all about it. See, one of the things that David teaches all of us is this. It's all right to tell God how you feel. That's where you start. Before Diana Ross was ever wise enough to sing it, God was saying from the portals of eternity, from the balconies of the universe, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from you. God has chosen to look beyond our faults and see our needs, to look beyond our blemishes and see our beauty, to look beyond our flaws and see our function, to look beyond our anxiety and see our ability, to look beyond our failures and envision
vision our future. God, my friend, is close enough to reach you, high enough to lift you, near enough to help you, strong enough to aid you, loving enough to keep you, powerful enough to protect you, good enough to bless you, wise enough to guide you, caring enough to heal you, and big enough to take care of you. What river can God not cross? What mountain can God not move? What are enemies compared to God? What are problems compared to God? What dilemma can God not remedy? What need can God not meet? What sickness can God not heal? What pandemic can God not stop? What battle can God not fight? Just talk to God. Tell God how you feel. Verbalize those emotions. I remember with regard to personal reference the first time that I had the courage to verbally tell God out loud, Lord, I really don't even feel like talking to you today. I've had a few days like that. Am I all by myself? But what I discovered is this, that if you get real with God, back it up, say it again. If you get real with God, then God will be real for you. God will take you from where you are to where you need to be. You can leave loneliness behind if you will verbalize it, but then secondly, if you will visualize it. Listen to what David said, verse 2, I spill out all my complaints before him and spell out all my my troubles in detail. David didn't just verbalize in terms of speaking. He visualized his situation. He saw it. In the Lance Watson prayer manual, this is how that text sounds. Lord, I'm grateful, but I want to be honest. This don't look good. Have you ever said that to yourself? He said as he looked around, everybody you sent me, God, is in trouble. There's nobody here but the distress, the discontent, and those who are in debt. God, you got to check this out. The blessing, my friends, in visualizing what you feel is that it helps you to keep it all in perspective. Things are not always as they appear. Do you remember Bible student? When the people of Israel were at Kadesh Barnea and they went over to look at the promised land, the majority of the reporters came back and painted a pessimistic picture of the giants and why their conquest of the land was impossible. What did they say? They said that they are like giants and we are like grasshoppers. Wait, here it is in our own eyes. That's how they saw the situation. 10 out of the 12 spies, but the two remaining, Joshua and Caleb, disagreed. And instead of painting a pessimistic picture, they painted a picture of possibility based on their conversation, commitment, and fellowship with Almighty God. They didn't forget the giants. They didn't ignore the giants. They didn't discount the giants. They just refused to make the giants greater than God. I feel obligated to say to somebody, your giants are not greater than your God. And that's why these two spies, Joshua and Caleb, voted for the conquest and not against it. Can I tell you something real quick? Number one, you have no giants that are greater than God. Number two, when you make God larger in your eyes, your giants will appear smaller in your eyes. And number three, don't ever stand still when it's time for you to move forward. I'm going to help somebody today because things are not always as they appear. Don't paint God out of your picture. Paint God in because sometimes what looks like a burden is actually a blessing. What looks like a storm is actually shelter. What looks like a setback is actually a setup. What looks like deprivation is actually elevation. What looks like a hurt is actually your healing. You've got to verbalize it. You've got to visualize it and 
And then thirdly, you'll recognize it. Could I get 434 of you to type that word, recognize, R-E-C-O-G-N-I-Z-E, -E, recognize. What did he recognize? I'm glad y'all asked. That's why I love preaching to you, even though I'm in this room all by myself and you are wherever you are. I love preaching to you because you send me the right questions in my head. What did he have to recognize? That God already knew what David was trying to tell him. Boy, somebody should shout right there that God, okay, get it. It's in verse three. He said, as I sink away in despair, my spirit ebbing away, you know how I'm feeling. Back it up, say it again. You know how I'm feeling. You know the danger I'm in. You know the traps hitting in my path. These words right here should comfort you all week long. God already knows. I got to linger right there until you type it out in the chat space. God already knows. Until you write it down in your notes, God already knows. Until you say it out loud, God already knows. That was the word that God gave to me personally coming into this pandemic that God knew we would be here before we ever got here. And since God did, God has already dispatched and dispensed and delivered the grace that we need to go through it and come out of it triumphant and victorious. What are you facing right now? Can I give you three words? God already knows. You know, it's hard to tell somebody bad news, but it's not nearly as difficult as if they already knew. Job 23 verse 10, Job says, he knows, God knows the way that I take. And when God, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Psalm 37 verse 23, the songwriter wrote, the steps of a good man or woman are ordered or established by the Lord. As we verbalize and visualize our emotions before God, we must recognize that what we now see, God has already seen. God is already through what we've come to. God already knows the pain and has given sufficient power. God already knows the disappointment and has incorporated it into your development. God already knows the wreck and has built you a new route. God already knows the fatigue and is sending fortification for your faith. God already knows the stress, but is determined to still bless. God already knows, my friend, you can leave loneliness behind if you will verbalize it, visualize it, recognize that, and then fourthly, realize. Realize what? God's provision. Verse five, I cry out, God, I call out, you're my last chance, my only hope for life. The New American Standard Bible renders this. I cried out to you, O Lord, I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. God will provide just as God provided a highway through the sea and a way through the wilderness for Moses and Israel, God will provide for you just as God provided victory for Joshua at Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. God will provide for you just as God took a sling, a stone, and a shepherd boy and delivered the armies of Israel from Goliath and the Philistines. God will provide for you just as God surrounded Shadmach, Meshach, and Abednego with divine fire retardant so that the fiery furnace did not incinerate them and the smell of smoke did not cling to them. God will provide for you just as God transformed the nature of lions for Daniel when thrown into the den and made them lay down and act like lambs. God will provide for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will provide. That's the testimony of scripture. Psalm 46 God is a refuge and strength, a very present help 
in times of trouble. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Why? God will provide. That's the testimony of scriptures and the testimony of the saints. Somebody online right now can and should testify that God has provided for you. How did he do it, preacher? Paid bills, given employment, shown favor, open doors, made ways, fought battles, silenced critics, dealt with enemies, dried tears, calm fears, extended years, saved lives. God is a provider. You can leave loneliness behind if you will verbalize it, visualize it, recognize that God knows, realize God's provision, and then summarize. Summarize what? Your victory. Victory is already yours. Did you hear what I said? Victory is already yours. As a child of God, as a person of faith, as a participant in the kingdom, we don't fight for victory. We fight for from victory. That's what David tells us in verse 7. He says, get me out of this dungeon. Why? So I can thank you in public. Your people will that's future tense. I'm anticipating it. Your people will form a circle around me and you will bring me showers of blessings in just a few verses. Don't miss it. He has shifted from crying out to God in lonely despair to asserting confidently that everything will be all right. Who is that for right there? Somebody type it. Everything will be all right. God God will deal bountifully with him because no good thing will God withhold from those that walk upright. Now, can you see our challenge, yours and mine? Most of us want to get to verse 7 without walking through verses 1 through 6. But purpose has a process purpose has a process. Did you hear what I said? God is up to something. Okay, I see I need to help you, so let me try to help you. One of my sons in the ministry, brilliant preacher, up and coming, a great pastor, Dr. Larry Ennis, shares some wonderful stories online about ordinary things that happen in his life. That's part of his genius that inspire me. And this week, he was posting online how he loves Slurpees from 7-Eleven. He said, and it's on Facebook, you can look him up. He says, if you're like me, once you've slurped the drink from the bottom of the cup, you tilt the cup, you poke the drink with your spoon straw to soften up what remains, and then you sip a little more. And when that no longer works, you scoop out as much as you can with your spoon straw. And when that no longer works, you pull the top off the thing and you tilt the cup at a 45 degree angle and then tap on the bottom of the cup to get the rest of the drink. He went on to summarize that by any means necessary, you get what's inside of the cup to come outside of the cup so that you can enjoy it like it was meant to be enjoyed. Can I tell you something, my friends, likewise, in the same way that Dr. Ennis deals with those Slurpees, God is determined to get out of you what God knows is inside of you. Your potential, your possibility, your creativity, your ingenuity, your persistence, your idea, your gift, your talent, your ability. God knows it's inside of you 
And so God lets you go through the tilting. God lets you go through the tapping. God lets you go through the shaking. God lets you go through the scraping so that God can get out of you what God knows is in you because here's the shout, God is not through with you yet. Go on and shout right there. That's the confidence of this songwriter. It's right there in the verse. He says, I'm getting out of this dungeon and I'll thank you in public. Back up. Purpose is a process and going through the process as well as coming out of the process, we are to praise God both privately and publicly. Why, preacher? Because no process lasts forever. Won't you miss your shout? I'm getting out of this. That's what the psalmist says. I won't always be lonely. I won't always be hurting. I won't always be bothered. I won't always be distress. Come here, Bashan Mitchell. It won't always be like this. That's what David anticipates as he concludes this psalm saying, get me out of this prison, out of this dungeon so that I can thank you in public. Your people will form a circle around me and you will bring me showers of blessings. My confidence in what's coming empowers me to vocalize. That's our last stop. I got to go. But Jeffrey Johnson shared this story of the 2017 Cleveland Browns. He pointed out that that team that year was defeated for the entire year. Their record was 0-16 for the entire season. They did not win one game. But here's the miracle. Even after a defeated season, the fans of the Cleveland Browns came together and raised money for a parade and a celebration at Brown Stadium. Don't miss it, my friends. I'm talking too fast. The team went not undefeated. The team went defeated for the entire year. Oh, no wins, 16 losses, and yet they still had enough confidence, the fans, enough belief, the fans, enough faith, the fans, enough tenacity, the fans, to galvanize around them and unite to celebrate them. They even raised $10,000 on a GoFundMe page and had over 20 floats at the parade in honor of this defeated team. It was cold and uncomfortable as they came together to celebrate a season of 0 and 16, but they celebrated anyway. And he concluded, and so do I, that if Browns fans could find a reason to celebrate after an entire season of defeat, somebody on this stream should start celebrating right now. You should start shouting right now. Yes, you've been hurt. Hurt. Yes, you've been deserted. Yes, you've been abandoned. Yes, you've had bitter moments. Yes, you've had dark days. Yes, you struggled through long nights. But God will form a circle around you. God will bring the right people to you at the right time in the right way. And God will rain on you showers of blessings. God will lift up your bow down head. God will raise up friends around you. God will open doors for you. God will fight battles for you. God will make ways for you. Leave loneliness behind. How, preacher? By seeing God ahead. Because God is not only behind you. God is beside you. And God is before you. Remind yourself that God will be with me. God will keep me. God will bless me. As old folk used to say. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. That's what kept David in the cave and that's what kept the son of David lonely in the garden of Gethsemane. Betrayed and forsaken with tears like drops of blood soon to be hunted by the soldiers and mocked by the crowd and nailed to a cross. What 
what kept Jesus in the midst of his suffering is that he knew it wouldn't always be like that. And even though he died on Friday, Sunday morning, God turned things around when he raised him up with all power in his hands and he vocalized his praise. When did he do that, preacher? He said, all power is in my hands. And God gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Good day, children. May the Lord bless you real good. But can I tell you in closing, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know, I said I know, he's watching me. I sing because I'm happy. I preach because I'm happy. I shout because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. Have I got a witness? And I know somebody type it. I know somebody type it. I know somebody said that he is watching over me. Leave loneliness behind. I want to invite you, my brother, my sister, my friend, on a journey of relationship. You don't have to live life all by your lonesome. God will gather a group of people around you and shower blessings down on you. This is your invitation to relationship. It begins with a decision to trust God for salvation by accepting God's free gift of grace provided in Jesus Christ. That's your first yes. It's saying, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe God sent him into the world and he died for me on the cross. But on the third day, God raised him up from the dead. I confess it and I receive Christ into my life. It begins there, but that's not where it ends because God will gather around you a group of people. The journey continues with your next yes, saying yes to the invitation to be a part of the family of faith. Yes, build a meaningful relationship with the church. I would love to be your pastor. The St. Paul's family, we would love to be your church virtually or personally when we're able to gather again. Right now, our new members team is standing by to greet you, to welcome you, to pray for you, pray with you, counsel with you in our new members gathering room. The link is right here on the screen. It's posted in the chat space. All you have to do is go there. Get there right now. Will you join us on this journey? of relationship and faith. We'd love to have you. This is your invitation. Don't miss this opportunity. Do it now as the choir sings. Just wanna praise you. Come on, say it. For ever, forever. And ever. And ever. and glory and honor come on say they all thank you Jesus for blessing me come on stay right there and sing it again church just want to praise you forever and ever
forever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. God is so good and God is faithful no matter what's going on. God has been good to every single person viewing this stream today. Go ahead and type an amen in the chat space if you hear me loud and clear. I like to be reminded of that. That's why I say it so often because that is the only attitude and the only spirit in which we should give out of a spirit of gratitude, recognizing what God has already done for us. Because God is not trying to get something from us. God is trying to give something to us. You can never reap what you have not previously sown. You've got to give something in order to get something. And it's not a quid pro quo, because it's not what you give, you get back. 
But the Bible says in Luke 6, 38, and this is Jesus talking, he says, give, that's your action, and it will be given to you. That seems like a quid pro quo until you read the West. He says, but when it comes back, when it's given to you, it'll be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men and women pour into your bosom. I want to encourage you and invite you to join me now in the grace of giving your tithe and your offering as a response to God's goodness to you. And it's easy to give at St. Paul's. All of the ways are posted across the bottom of the screen and will remain there through the next selection of our music ministry. You can give digitally, online, or sending your check in the mail. We are incredibly grateful for your continuous support. So give God your best because God has already given you his best. Let's pray together over our offering, over our tithe, in the name of the Lord. Ever-present God who speaks in thunder and earthquakes and yet in the softest whisper, we thank you that we can hear your voice in the midst of all the noise in the world. In a world that is often divided, disunified, and polarized, we thank you that we can still hear you and that we can still respond to you, that you walk with us, you talk with us, you never leave us, you never abandon us. Thank you for all of the gifts that we have. And we refuse to treat banks and bills better than we treat you. So we bring you our tithe today. We bring you our first fruit. We bring you the best part of what you have provided for us, returning it according to your word in obedience to the scripture. We pray now that you would receive these gifts, bless the gift and the giver, in Jesus' name, that none might ever suffer for what they give, but that all might be richly, truly, and abundantly blessed. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Let's give together.
Today is Communion Sunday. So if you have not yet done it, gather your elements very quickly. Bread and wine, juice and crackers. Gather your elements. It's not the element that's important. It's the remembrance. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the Christians in Corinth. He says, for I have received of the Lord that which I deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. So every first Sunday that the Lord gives us breath, the St. Paul's family everywhere assembles to share these elements, to remember and celebrate Jesus Christ and to recommit to our love one for another. He prayed, let us pray. Everywhere we are, oh God, you are. So be present with every person who shares this stream in the way they need it most. As we share this moment of communion, I pray that you would nudge those who have not yet begun a relationship with you to start it right now. That you would nudge those who are outside of the fellowship of faith for whatever reason to step over the line and recommit and reconnect right now. Bless us as we share these elements and remember Jesus Christ. And thank you for his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his return. Bless us now to live faithfully in light of who he was and is and ever shall be. Live in us, O oh God, that the world might see you and give you glory. This we pray in the name of Jesus and all the people said together, amen. In his name, let us eat and drink together. And we do these things in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Were you blessed by this worship celebration today? I certainly hope that you were. If you were, would you please pause for a moment and give us a little comment in the chat space. Send us something, some feedback to let us know how you felt, what you experienced, what you learned, what you heard, what you now know, and what you now will do as a result of this worship experience. If you were inspired, can I encourage you to be generous and share this stream with somebody else? It's so easy. All you have to do is click the share arrow and direct the stream to whomsoever you would choose to send it or copy the URL from your web browser if you're watching on the web and send that link to people you know in your family and in your network. The family that prays together stays together. I also wanna encourage you to download the resource that we call our GPS guide. It's posted on social media in the chat spaces. It's available on our mobile app, MySPBC, APP, our mobile app, as well as our website, myspbc.org. The GPS document is a message application guide designed to help you to discuss this word with your family and your friends for deeper and more personal life application. And don't forget, if you would like prayer, if you'd like counseling, if you'd like conversation, if you want information about how to become a member of this church, our team is on standby right now at myspbc.info backslash gathering room. It's right there on the lower third of the screen, and they're going to be there for at least 30 minutes following this stream. We'd love to talk to you. Would you 
give me your attention now and let's receive our benediction, our final and parting blessing together. It's something we say together. So say it with me. I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently live genuinely, persist relentlessly, and leave loneliness behind. God bless you. Until next time, we love you in the Lord. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. Hurt but not hindered, how to move forward. You don't want to miss it. Join us for the Bridge Bible Study every Thursday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's streamed across all of our platforms. Invite your friends and family. Download the student outline from our website at myspbc.org or text the word INSIDER to 804-643-4769 to receive it automatically each week. Invite someone to watch with you. You may not realize it, but the health of your soul is affected by what you experience in life the ups and downs, challenges, and stress. Caring for your soul goes a long way in keeping you steady, filled with peace, and growing in wisdom. After a year in pandemic, we are all in need of repair. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, for this insightful series as he leads us on a journey of soul repair. Invite somebody to share it with you. You can now schedule your own COVID-19 vaccine appointments by Number one, visiting vaccinefinder.org to find locations in your area and to schedule your own appointment. Individuals without internet or phone access can get assistance inside local libraries utilizing their free internet access. Number two, visit vax.rchd.com to directly schedule an appointment at one of the local vaccination events hosted by the Richmond Henrico Health District. Number three, Schedule an appointment over the phone by calling RHHD at 804-205-3501, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Questions? Email outreach at myspbc.org. Rain or shine, our fresh food distribution will take place May 14th and 28th. Over a thousand fresh food boxes will be given away. No registration. Just show up and pick up at 29 Elm Street, Petersburg, Virginia from 2 to 4 p.m. At 700 East Belt Boulevard in Richmond from 4 to 6 p.m. Or at 4247 Creighton Road, Henrico, Virginia from 4 to 6 p.m. Or until all food is gone. This is in partnership with Feed More, Produce Source Partners, Save a Lot, and Anthem Health Keepers Plus. Mask is required. Questions? Email outreach at myspbc.org to volunteer. We give praise to God for 40 new members thus far in 2021. Who will invite number 41? Every new member is required to complete our DNA seminar. It's a one day, 90 minute introduction to our church family. The next seminar for adults is Monday, May 3rd at 6.30 p.m. The next seminar for kids is Sunday, May 16th at 12.30 p.m. Visit myspbc.info slash DNA for Zoom login info. Connect with us for one-on-one -on -one prayer or counseling at any time during our Sunday morning worship experience. We'd love to talk with you. Join us in our virtual gathering room at www.myspbc.info slash gathering room. Love God, love people, got skills, we're hiring. We would love to hear from you. Learn more about our current openings and how to apply at www.myspbc.info slash job openings. Join us for Real Talk, Black Women in Wellness, hosted by the American Heart Association and brought to you by Privia Women's Health and Virginia Women's Center. It will include an expert panel that will provide tips to boost your body and soul. Please join us on May 11th from 12 to 1 p.m. via Zoom at the link on the screen or from 7 to 8 p.m. on Facebook 
at American Heart VA. Come lend your voice to a conversation about the state of health for black women and what we can all do to improve it. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.